This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures was brought to you by the Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. This week's a special episode because I get to introduce you to John Sullivan. For the last 11 seasons, John has played center in the NFL, hiking footballs to the likes of Brett Favre while he was playing in Minnesota, and Kirk Cousins when he was in Washington, and his last game was as the starting center for the LA Rams in the Super Bowl. And while his profession was always football, his passion was hunting. And now he's starting a new career post football with Steve's Outdoor Adventures. Because John played football, his hunting experience is extremely limited simply because hunting season and football season overlap and his professional career had to take priority. We had traveled to Alaska together and hunted spring grizzlies. But really, John needed to get out and start experiencing the hunts that we offer our clients. So I arranged a hunt for elk down in Utah. I set the hunt up for early October when the rut would be well underway. Most of our clients would be done hunting and I knew that he would get to experience a real elk hunt in the aspen covered Wasatch Mountains. Not only was I excited about hunting elk, it was my first opportunity to hunt in the great state of Utah. I was just getting light up here first morning. This place is beautiful. We're just catching it perfectly. The aspen trees are turning color. Elk are in the peak of the rut. I'm gonna hop in the Bobcat UTV and we're gonna head down to the fork in the road and up to the top of the mountain. So, Dobie's got a plan. We hunt with Dobie. We follow Dobie's plan. I love it. I knew based on the time of year, we would be hunting elk during the rut, which meant that I'd be hearing bugling bulls, we would be cow calling, and hopefully we'd be calling bulls into us. There's two bulls. There's another one back to the right chasing them cows. And then he's down there losing it. We were glassing multiple herds of elk, but they were all moving the opposite direction and up into the timber to bed for the day. And suddenly, we heard a bugle behind us that was coming to the cow calls. And we rushed to get set up and call him into view. Five on the right, four. That's pretty cool. So we've got an evening plan put together for some milk that are already up in the bedding area. But uh, we just had this goofy horn bull come out here behind us. He's bugling and working his way. If he'd been a big bull, we definitely would have had a good shot at him. <laughs> but uh, we'll go find some more elk. It's a great way to start the first morning of a hunt, though, Dom. That's good. Yeah, we'll do this every time. <laughs> Our guide was Dobie Bat, a guy that I know really well and I've hunted with in the past. We're just kind of calling down into the canyons, hiking over to the edges, calling in, trying to locate a bull. You know, first thing this morning, all the elk were up top. As we work our way down, we're finding less and less action, so I guess we'll keep trolling. We decided to put all of our effort into that evening hunt and try to coax one of those bulls across the meadow and into rifle range. It was a bet that I was hoping would pay off. Went in right there. Yeah. And Dobie thought they'd come out up here a little higher, but I thought I just heard you watch. We did. We were hunting a spot where a lot of elk had congregated. 
But incidentally, it also happened to be a spot where the neighbor's fence line came into play. And for us to get a shot, I had to coax one of these bulls across the fence line. We had a bull coming straight towards us, responding to the cow calls. Unfortunately, about 50 yards short of the fence, he was able to get our wind. We saw him stop dead in his tracks, put his nose straight up in the air, take a giant whiff, and turn and move off in the other direction. We'd been busted and we knew it. Uh, it was incredibly disappointing. However, it was the first night of the hunt, and I knew that we had four more days you know, to connect on one of these amazing animals. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles. A passion for precision, every barrel, every rifle. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by Pendleton Ammunition and our new line of TSS turkey loads. The next morning, Dobie wanted to go back up and hunt the boundary fence again. The herd bull up there was a big six by six. It would be a fine trophy for any hunter and he'd been seen on our side of the fence several times. So it was definitely worth another try. side of the fence. But we're gonna take off and go back up higher on the mountain. Go find some new elk. Find some elk there in the middle of the ranch instead of on the fence line. <laughs> ah, but that one bull's a dandy. A couple shooters over there for sure. We just gotta keep hunting until we find a good one for John. Big John needs an elk. As we moved into the aspens and followed the bugles, we got close to another pond and spotted the bull, a small five by five. And while John could have shot him, he passed and decided to keep hunting and headed further up the mountain. Day. 
In a very remote basin below an avalanche slide, we heard a bugle and started working the bull. We couldn't see him, but the wind was in our favor. We had a path to move in and close the distance on him. Mid-morning, we went up into an avalanche basin and got a bull to respond to the calling. It didn't take Steve long to call him in. And while he was a nice five by five, I was determined to hold out a little longer in hopes of finding a six by six. He's just a five by five. Yeah, we could shoot him if we wanted to already. Yeah, I did too though. I, we come here to get a nice six point if we can. It's only the second morning of your hunt, so yeah. Let's let that go. Let's see if we can find a better one. Yeah. A lot of six points around. We just be selected, but that's fun. I mean, that's kind of what it's all about. Yeah, getting them up close and personal. Yeah. Like second ball that if he was a shooter today, he'd be dead. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers. We've got you covered. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition. Loading bullets, one round at a time. The second night of the hunt, we were in a different remote part of the ranch. And we hiked in on a, a large herd, actually multiple herds of elk. They were feeding and drinking around a, a waterhole complex on the side of a mountain. We hiked in along an old two track. We could hear them bugling. We could hear the cows chirping. We knew that there were elk all over the mountain. As we stalked in, we were just hoping that we wouldn't get busted. We were able to get in, you know, close the distance to about 200 yards away from some six point bulls. But we knew there were elk down the hillside, maybe 25 to 50 yards in front of us. As I got prone, we had picked out a six point. We were seeing sixes and fives, cows, spikes, every elk you could possibly imagine. There were bulls above us in the aspens and in the pines. There was a monster bull way down in the bottom near a beaver dam complex that we ended up naming T-Rex with the loudest grunt and bugle you've ever heard in your entire life. Right as a six by six that I was gonna shoot stepped out from behind an aspen in front of us, we heard a cow chirp and we knew that we had been busted again. With this being my first elk hunt, uh, what you realize is so much has to come together and so much has to go right. And when you're going after these big sixes, not only are they educated and they don't get big for no reason, but they also have harems of cows and calves and satellite bulls. So you don't just have to defeat the six by six, you have to beat all the sets of eyes of the elk that are associated with those herds. So unfortunately we got busted again. They moved off. We actually stayed in the area. We continued to cow call, actually got the elk to move closer, but unfortunately we ran out of camera light and that was it for the second night of the hunt. There's some of them in the bottom, some of them up there, they're kind of scattered all over. Last night there was three noticeable herd bulls and three different bunches of elk moving, so we're gonna get in there and see what we can locate and go find them. We just gotta try and find that big bull. We can't see him from here, so got to work. We didn't see him, but we could hear the bugles up near the top of the mountain, and we assumed that he had already made his way to the thick bedding area. Take a break up underneath these trees. We got that basin we've been working for two days above us. It's calm down here. Wind might be blowing up there. Down here it's calm. A little swirly wind, but not bad. 
Mike, we're in a good position for tonight. We just need the help to cooperate. Each day that went by, there was less and less bugling, and the rut started to wind down. So we returned that afternoon and worked our way up the bottom of the valley, hoping to find a good spot to ambush him as he fed out that evening. It was the perfect plan. But darkness set in before they could feed down to us and offer a shot. Nothing came out, couldn't pull him out. We'll have to be back tomorrow morning and try again. We'll come up with a new plan, something's gotta give. We're running out of days. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped ready to shoot. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. The next morning, we started the final day of John's hunt, and it didn't start off well. The bulls were already way up high in the bedding area when the sun came up, and there was nothing that we could do but let them stay there and work on a plan to catch them that evening. This is where Dobie's knowledge of the ranch was the difference between success and failure. The bull's last bugles that morning were from an aspen stand just above a meadow with a wallow and a beaver pond. And that afternoon, Dobie took us up the far side of the ranch and down a ridge that came out across from where he thought that the elk were most likely to feed out that evening. We crawled the last 50 yards on our hands and knees so the elk wouldn't spot us. Initially, we saw a cow and a smaller bull, and we knew that the, the elk were in the area. If they had fed back the way that they came, we would have seen them. If they had fed off the property, we would have seen them. And ultimately, we, you know, we were able to set up and range the complex. We knew that the, that the beaver dam was 350 yards. Up to the right, I was laying prone next to Steve. We were both spotting. I had the rifle set up, bipod out, ready to roll. And I saw an elk's butt on the mountainside. My neck was, was starting to get tired <laughs> from being prone. So I asked Steve to, uh, to check on that elk. He ended up, I, I'll never forget the words, he ended up telling me, that's the herd bull. So I got ready, I got in the rifle, waited for him to turn broadside. We realized he was a five, and on the fifth day of my hunt, having never shot a bull elk before, I decided he was the elk that I was gonna take. So your call. Smoked him. Hold on, on him again, no he's hit. He's hit, he's right there, tipping, falling, just crushed him. Taking out all the aspens. Wait, I'm on him, I'm on him. See all the dust? Yep. Dust everywhere. He's in the aspens right there. <laughs> nice shot, you got him right through the lungs, buddy. <laughs> Your first elk runner. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, bud. Good shot. Such an. I mean, I went when we when we were doing the stalk up here, mm -hmm. and you're crawling, and I'm crawling. You know, two steps at a time, and then putting the yeah. rifle up, and then two steps at a time, putting the rifle up. Yeah. I looked out to the left of you, and I see the Wasatch Mountains out there, <laughs> and I'm like, this is just unbelievable. Yeah. Right, like. Cool. Want me to carry it? Yeah. If it happens, it'll happen fast. There ain't gonna be no backpack, man. No, it's a, it's a rag. That's a rag one. This wasn't the big six by six I had envisioned taking, but it didn't matter. I was incredibly excited for my first bull and I can hardly wait for my next elk hunting adventure. Yeah.
I get a lot of enjoyment in helping other people on their hunts. And this was a special moment for John and anyone's first elk is special. Hunts like this one are very important for John. They're critical for his education as a professional hunting consultant. If he's gonna pick up the phone and call our clients and talk to them about their hunting options, he has to have firsthand knowledge of the locations, the guides, the terrain, the animals, everything. And I know that John is dedicated to this craft and over the next few years, he's gonna go on several trips, he's gonna gain a lot more experience, he's truly gonna become what we call a professional hunting consultant. When you walk up on a bull or any animal, any wild animal for that matter, you have the realization that you're the first person that's ever touched that animal. These are true free range, fair chase, wild elk. Something tells me that this is harder than it looks right now with a three professionals doing it. And with John's football career now over, he joins a new team at Steve's Outdoor Adventures, along with Travis Price and myself and the rest of the staff to help build a bigger, stronger brand for our clients to take advantage of. And John's experience level grows each month as he travels to new destinations like New Mexico and Alaska and all of the other world-class destinations where we offer our clients hunting and fishing opportunities. In fact, if you'd like to book this Utah elk hunt for yourself, give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week as we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures.